everybody, so we have a fun review today as we're talking Amazon Prime Videos Fallout. This is actually something I've been really looking forward to, even despite the fact that I'm not as big of a fan of the Fallout franchise as I used to be. Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, those were my jams playing them in middle school and high school just to give you an idea of how old I am. And then some of the other releases like Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 were ones I wasn't as fond of. I can't deny the fact that all the promotional material for the series has reinvigorated my interest in the franchise, and thankfully with this show, they're taking a wise approach deciding to not adapt any of the video games at all, instead crafting a brand new story that's just set within the universe that we know. Which for a long-standing franchise like this, I do think it is a great idea. It appeals to everyone. It appeals to the new fans that don't have much of a frame of reference playing those video games. But yet there's also a lot of stuff packed into these eight episodes that I feel like longtime fans will pick up on and only enhance their experience. There's so many different things to praise within the Fallout series. Like it's genuinely impressive how well this show captures the overall experience from playing the games, even with these dueling narratives between three characters' stories. A good amount of that wacky zaniness from the Fallout universe shines through. The overall attention to every single detail in this show is impeccable. And how it builds out the world in live action, all the vaults, the costume design, the gadgets, seeing the power armor in live action, the little tidbits of satire thrown in throughout, and the vast amount of dangerous mutated creatures and other terrifying threats once Lucy's rescue venture begins, once she ventures off onto her adventure to the surface world. That even includes the combat. There are several homages to the combat system in Fallout, where you watch people get targeted and follow bullets in slow motion and going through people in bloody, gory fashion. This is a show that doesn't skimp on the blood, nastiness, and the gore. There are several sequences that I had to almost look away. I'm talking giant bullet holes through people's sternums, people getting their legs blown off. There's one sequence in particular that was extremely nasty to me, and that's where someone's skull gets crushed by power armor. What really does drive Fallout success, though, is how engaging most of these stories are in the way that Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan weave them all together, each adding their own unique flavors to the mix. Getting perspective on the Brotherhood of Steel story through Maximus's character, witnessing the extreme conditions he endures as a squire and then moving up the ranks, provides some pretty surprising conflicts within the story, because the entire reason that Maximus even gains a suit of power armor is through questionable means. On the bright side, because he does have this power armor, we get to see it in action a whole lot throughout the eight episodes. The only downside is he's not very good at using it. It's still definitely awesome when we get to see it in action in some of the action sequences. The most engaging storyline out of the three is pretty much the main story at hand that revolves around vault dweller Lucy played by Ella Purnell. The arc that we see her character go on is an interesting one, this Fallout style inspired fish out of water story. The journey we go on with Lucy's character has so many twists and turns in it. Firstly, we see her as this bubbly, carefree individual who's blissfully ignorant to the truth of the world in her vault, only to then have this massive culture shock from the moment she's forced to go on this rescue mission style adventure. In just about almost every single episode, she is put through pure hell the moment she gets up there. Trying her best to make allies while scavenging for supplies. All the while, pretty much every single thing up there is trying to kill her. If it isn't raiders or ghouls trying to kill her, or creatures trying to eat her, or other things trying to harvest her organs, there's also just Walton Goggins' character coming in and out of the story. Walton Goggins is just one of those actors that I think is criminally underrated. Each time he's in a movie or a TV show, he gives a fantastic performance, despite the fact that most of the time he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. Deserves. I hope he gets the recognition he deserves for his performance in Fallout though because he might be my personal favorite amongst the entire cast. He continues to showcase fantastic range with this outlaw type character Cooper Howard otherwise known as the ghoul which I know could be kind of confusing but there's other ghouls in the show but bear with me. Given his last name I have to imagine that Cooper Howard is named after Todd Howard the director and executive producer at Bethesda Game Studios who worked on many of the Fallout games. Any single time his character appears on screen he's so menacing and important posing with his presence, yet has this fun, twisted southern charm to him. Practically any single time he appears in the episode, you get excited because you know some wild shit's about to happen. Another major aspect about his character that I enjoyed about the overall narrative of Fallout is the way that he's utilized to flesh out a lot of the backstory of the universe. Since through his character, since he's been alive so long, we get to learn more about the history of the early days of the vault Tech Corporation, and also just his life before he turned into a ghoul, even giving fascinating context to things in the world of Fallout, fleshing out the world a little bit more for fans of the video game series. It's kind of ironic in a sense, especially if you've played the Fallout video game. Sometimes while you're playing it, you get kind of sidetracked from the main missions doing other stuff. But stuff like that is apparent in the storyline for even the TV series of Fallout. At its core, all three main characters are trying to acquire
require the same exact thing despite mostly being separated for long stretches of the season. Some episodes by far are more engaging than others. There's a stretch in the middle of the series. As far as major plot progression goes, the needle isn't moved all that much due to being sidetracked by various different things. Different adversaries blocking the way. Some of these characters get kidnapped multiple times in one season. There's also this storyline going on inside of the vaults, this mystery swirling underneath the surface. In this case, it's literally underneath the surface. The secrets that are dug up are tantalizing. So certain episodes do feel a little bit crowded as far as storylines are concerned, trying to progress. Much like a lot of the big shows on Amazon Prime Video, you can definitely tell they pumped a lot of money into this show. It's visually stunning. Jonathan Nolan directs several of the episodes, and each of his look phenomenal. Practical effects and CGI, realizing this world and the creatures and all that stuff, it's breathtaking. But there are a few moments that are kind of distractingly bad. It's mostly just one character in particular. There's one character that we meet along the way that has one eye, and it's really bad CGI, at least in my opinion. Doctor Strange's eyeball and Multiverse of Madness got a lot of flack, but I think this looks just as bad, if not worse. Where everything leaves off at the tail end of season one, though, I am intrigued where a season two potentially could go, considering the fact that it definitely sets up a season two. But yeah, as far as video game adaptations go, I think this Fallout series arguably is one of the best ones we've seen so far. I had a great time with it. I hope fans of Fallout have a great time with it as well. And even new fans, I think this show will definitely open the door for people to revisit some of those games, particularly Fallout 3, 4. I don't know about 76, although that game is a little bit better now from what I've heard. I haven't played it in a very long time. Once you check out the Fallout series on Amazon Prime Video, make sure you share your thoughts down below. What'd you think of the series? Show all your thoughts down below. It's part of the fun stat conversation with you guys in the comments section. Thank you guys. As always, share out videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel to update reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. For the next time, I'll see you guys later.